last week we kicked off a series that we are referring to as Exodus. Exodus series means that we are moving from this tent and going to the building. That's one aspect of the Exodus. The other aspect is that in the spiritual realms, all truth is parallel. So we, as we move from the physical, the tent, to the, to the other building, we also believe that we are moving in our financial situations, uh, in the family situations. We are moving into uh, freedom uh, we, that, that Christ has given us, into ministry, into every aspect. So we are, this is our season, and we began last Sunday, and we'll be moving on. This is our second session. Uh, last Sunday we talked about uh, God caring during throughout the entire period and uh, and today our subject is mentoring so we are launching mentoring today and uh, we look at mentoring as a way of partnering with God to develop the next Canaan generation we realize that it is not the entire generation that alive the promised lot uh, and we want to move with our next generation so we are in Exodus season, and we want to welcome everyone who has just come in today. Maybe you are not there when we kicked off the, the series last, last uh, Sunday. Uh, we, we want you to catch up with us and begin to move with us so that you are not left in Egypt alone because we are moving. Now, we are not going alone. alone. We are moving together, and we are not going empty-handed. That is why, again, we want to focus on economic empowerment so that we do not have uh, a situation whereby you want to participate in this exodus, you want to do something, and you are not able to do it. So we want to move together. Um, and the Lord has been very gracious to us because since we launched this, he has confirmed to us that we are not going alone, that we are also going with our neighbors. This week, past week, we had a church in Wetavia that has struggled so much, closing down and, and uh, just, just completely uh, getting finished because of COVID situations and other reasons. But by the grace of God, uh, God brought them here. And so we are going together with them. And Humphrey announced earlier that there will be meetings there. And we want to make sure that you don't miss those meetings. And we have asked Dennis and uh, Macharia and his wife to be the link between us and that church so that we can, we can keep focused. So we are expanding and we are going together with every other person in this Exodus. Uh, and in Exodus chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, last Sunday, we read, And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards these people, so that when you, ha you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Our church is very much focused into economic empowerment, that's why Amika is here. That's why Humphrey has been leading that and bringing the entire community to enlighten the people so that we move together, uh, even with our financial situations. Because we, we, we cannot serve the Lord empty-handed. In this journey, we can't serve the Lord without financial empowerment. We need finances. If we are going to move from this tent to the next building, we need to be empowered financially. Verse 22, every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing which you will put on your sons and daughters and so you will plunder in Egypt and we therefore do not want to leave anyone behind we also want to work together with the neighbors who are, are, are around here uh, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, favor today if, we, if, we, if one of you God speaks to you and you give us 6.5 million Kenya shillings to this church today, if you just load and donated 6.5 million shillings today, we would move, push this fence, this fence of our neighbor, and push it a little bit further, because he has accepted to increase this lad for us to the other side. So that means favor even with the neighbors to move away so that the church can have more space. That doesn't just happen. It only happens in a season of Exodus. It only happens when the Lord has ordered situations to happen. And this is, this is only one because God has told us we will move with our neighbors. This is only one. We will even approach others. Even other neighbors here. Because we want enough space to be able to serve the Lord here 
as we begin uh, the construction. So just know prayerfully, and if the Lord speaks to you and you feel like uh, you are in a position to participate in expanding the space of the church, that opportunity is there. And we, we will thank the Lord so much for that. Now Exodus chapter 10 verse 9, Moses answered, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, and with our frocks and hearts, because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. We are not leaving our children behind. We are not leaving whether young or old. We are going together with our families. And we want everyone to participate and to belong to this season and to belong to what, what the Lord is doing here. One of the greatest joy in my life is when I see our children here, how they give themselves, even their blood, to serve. When we started this journey of, the, of building this church, we had several walks and we walked around very far distances. Our children were always in the front line. And when, if you, for those of you who know the faces of these children in this picture, you can tell that time is moving. When you look at those faces, you can tell time is moving. Because those who look like babies there, now they are, they some have already finished even from four and they are, they are big kids. Meaning that we have been in this tent for too long. We have been in this tent for too long. The, fa the faces of these children will testify that we have been here for too long. That it is time that we move and uh, move to the next step. In fact, not just children. One of the ladies holding the banner there has since been married and has given birth. And it is somebody's wife. That tells you how seasons have changed when we have been here. And the same way that we have changed physically and status, including marital status, it, the same way the tent is also changing. It is also not being left behind. That is why it is our time now. That's why it is our season now, so that we can grow and move together. So we are going all of us together. And uh, it is important, parents, that you understand that we have cards. Your children will bring cards to you to fundraise. Watoto watawaletea card nyumbani zimesha toka ziko tayari na ni vizuri usaidiane na wao kwa sababu wengine wengine wanashagisha hizo pesa alafu zinakosa kufika hapa na hiyo tena ni shida kwa sababu tunawasaidia watoto wetu kukua vizuri so ni vizuri u, u, wewe mwenyewe uketi na mtoto msaidie tumia hii fursa use this opportunity to teach your children on how to participate in a church project, how to be part of it, and those basic things of honesty and being faithful stewards with what does not belong to them. So you encourage them when they come. Introduce them to your, your sister or your brother who is their uncle and uh, let, them, let them push the uncle to give them some money or the auntie and the people within the family. Help them when they come with the cards to post it in your family WhatsApps so that the, fa the family knows that uh, the children are also interested in building the church. So we invite you to walk that journey with the children and coordinate with the Sunday school teachers because we have seen them give their blood, walking terrorously. And when we told them we carry them when we went through KU, Kahawa, all around, they said no. They refused to be carried until they finish the whole. They said, Tunajenga Kanisa. We are building the church. We must finish. So we must encourage them and also ourselves. Uh, we are not leaving anyone behind. So we will go with our children, both young, old, sons and daughters. This might be a good opportunity for you to sit together as a family and ask yourself uh, what kind of sacrifice you would like to, to give on behalf of your son or your daughter Something that will cost you something. Something that, uh, that, that, that that child would live to know. That my parents gave this sacrifice for me. So that this building can be built for God. So these are conversations that we need to begin to have. Uh, with our children in our families. Uh, because we are going with them. And we are going with our material possessions. We are going with money. We are going with skills. We are going with gifts in kite. And this train has departed and no turning back. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri tujue kwamba huu ni msimu wetu, ni majira yetu na imefika na tungependa kule nyumbani. Haya masugumzo yaendelee ili kila mtu ahusike 
uh, na awe part ya hii project and because of because we are not going alone so today then we focus on mentoring because when we talk about mentoring we are thinking about how do we partner with god to develop people how do we partner with god in what he has started in people to build the next generation people who will carry forward what you are doing people who will build your legacy people who will reach their destination people that you can be proud of several years down uh, down the line so our focus today is mentoring and we launch uh, we, we launch this mentoring knowing very well that if you invest in somebody through what we are calling mentoring you are actually co-working with god to develop that person to help that person become a better person and we we are glad that we also have the the amica people because we are asking them how can the bank partner with the church in in economic empowerment how financial education how can you work with the, with the church in in that area how can you work with individuals and you have shown us a lot of product and 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 uh, and that is good but we are also asking how do you how do you work with us alongside us with the, both individuals and also groups uh, as far as mentoring is concerned christianity is a religion of relationships and it's very different from other religions it is about relationships and relationships begin all the way from genesis the moment we 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 open the bible uh, in genesis we begin to see relationships right there with the father god the father son and the holy spirit the trinity and we that is the same place where we have the declaration that it is not good for man to be alone right from genesis because christianity is a religion of relationships and it goes all the way with the relationships until the last chapter again when it talks about the church and the bride where jesus is preparing a bride it's all about relationships na kwa hivyo ni muhimu sana kila mtu awe na uhusiano mzuri mtu na ule mwingine and you know how to relate and every christian should live within healthy relationships with god and with man kila mkristo ni vizuri ajifunze kuishi katika uhusiano bora na mungu na binadamu wale wengine and every christian should have supportive relationships relationships that support you because every person requires to be supported in their personal life in their career in their profession in their business in their spiritual development nobody can do without support and when we talk about supportive relationships we are talking about relationships that will push you uh, further to what you want to be in all these areas that that we are talking about so we have three main supportive relationships one of them is is the discipleship na hii kanisa tunajali sana mambo ya discipleship kwa sababu when god spoke to us 30 years ago and right now we are celebrating 30 years for GOA god spoke to us from Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 and he told us to go and make disciples so making disciples is our core mandate it is our dna it is what god has called us to do so wakati mtu amejuana na mungu tunataka tumpeleke hatua hiyo nyingine we do not just add at the new believer or the new convert but we want you to be discipled so that you know you know more about god that's why recently we did a series of baptism classes here and uh, helped you to become a better disciple to learn more and then we ended up baptizing 15 people a few months ago because discipleship is key and if you are here and you feel that you really want to be a learner disciple is a learner you want to know more you want to get deeper you talk to us talk to us talk to pastor peter and we will specifically put you in a discipleship class because we want you to learn because discipleship is a supportive relationship that we need to give you the other the other one is coaching somebody coach looks at you and sees the skills that you have and coaches you to improve them to become a better person in those uh, those skills i used to be i used to be a volleyballer and uh, and my coach for volleyball was an excellent coach the my 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 volleyball coach would even coach a person who is not gifted in volleyball and you become you become a volleyballer 
Because he was so specific and so clear. Coaching is when somebody sees something, skill in you, and tells you that if you did this or you do this, you do it better than 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 than, than you are doing it already. For example, in volleyball, you would be told very well how how you will bend your knee nicely, how you receive the ball, and how you pass it on to another person, and how the other person will pass it to the other one, and how the other one will spike the ball. That's coaching, where you are taught the skill of doing something. The business people will coach you, and 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 Humphrey has uh, has already kicked off this series of entrepreneurship seminars here. Where you are coached, how do you start? Where do you start? How do you handle small ones and big ones? When do you pay yourself and all that? And that's a that's a reason again we are bringing in the bank professionals so that when we have a day here, when we when people are just need to be coached on where do you begin? How do you how do you handle those those books and all that? So coaching is a supportive relationship, and you do need people to coach you in your life, depending on where you want to go. And what what skills you need to develop to the next level? Now, mentoring is the other supportive relationship, and that's our focus today. The other two, we will not talk about them today. We want to focus on mentoring as a supportive relationship. Nani vizuri siku yaleo ujiuriza kama umejizingira na watu ambao na wakona uhusiano ambayo inaweza kukusaidia kukuwa bora zaidi katika mambo ambayo unataka kufanya. Now, if you look at uh, the leaders in the Bible, they mentored other leaders. Uh, why did they mentor them? So that they can reach their full potential. Moses, for example, is mentored by his father Jethro, father-in-law Jethro, as a son-in-law. And he is also mentored as a leader. And if you turn to uh, Exodus chapter 19, 18, and it is good that uh, when you get the opportunity, you read the, the mentoring relationship. Jethro is telling Moses that you don't do things this way because you're going to die, you're going to be frustrated, you don't do things this way. Now that is what we are calling mentoring. When you have somebody who can speak into your life and tell you what you are doing is not right, that you need to do it this way. And those relationships are the ones that are missing in life. Unaweza kuwa umeokoka, na ni vizuri. Lakini mtu wakukuambia, ae, kama unataka kufauru vile unavyosema basi utakiwi kulala hiyo masaa yote that is, that is a person who can tell you things that nobody else can tell you kuna mambo mimi kama mchugaji siwezi kukuambia ama labda siwezi hata jua kwa sababu sijui unaishi namna gani but when you have a mentor is a person who will tell you like uh, Moses is being told by the father in law that you don't do work like that you don't work that way you delegate, you give work to other people. So that, that is what we are calling mentoring. Somebody will ask you, how much do you spend on the phone? How much do you spend on television? How much do you spend on this? How much do you... Those questions that will help you become a better person. Somebody who will want to, to tell you, kama unataka kufika mahali umesema unataka kufika, nishalti ogeze masomo, nishalti usome bibiria, nishalti ufanya hii na hii, kulingana na mahali unataka kufika. Now, those are the relationships that we find in the Bible for people who have succeeded. If you look at Samuel, he mentored Eli. Mentored by Eli. First Samuel 1, 4. Na wakati Eli alikufa, Samuel alikuwa ametalishwa vizuri through the relationship to take responsibility. Kuna watu wengi wameokoka, lakini hawaja tayarishwa vizuri kufanya jambo ambalo wanataka kufanya kwa sababu hiyo inahitaji binadamu wa kutayarisha. And that's why we are talking about mentoring as a supportive relationship. Now, ukiangalia uh, from our Exodus uh, series, Moses, Moses being meant, uh, Moses and mentoring Joshua. And that's our focus today. That's our emphasis. Na ukisoma Biblia vizuri utaona Numbers chapter 27 which is our main text today. Verse 18, so the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Now that laying of hand, that is transferring authority. It is what a mentor will do to the person they are mentoring. Now have him stand before Eleazar the priest, and the entire Sabri, and commission him in their presence. Now the commissioning 
is part of the, the mentoring. You look at a person, he has reached a certain uh, uh, level, and then you bring him to the public and say, this is a good man, the way I've worked with him. Verse 20, give him some of your authority. So the whole Israelite community will obey him. Now, you see, empowering another person, you lay your hands, you give authority, you take them before the people, and you tell the people uh, that you can vouch for that person. Kwa hivyo ni kusema kwamba, unahitaji mtu ambaya naweza kukutia guvu zaidi, kufika mahali, akupe mamlaka ya kufanya kile unataka kufanya. That's what we are talking about. Unaweza kuwa unajiuriza. Bona, mambo yangu haedi vizuri sana. Kwa jabu fulani na fulani. Labda ni kwa sababu, hauja pata uhusiano wa mshauri ambaye tayari amepitia mahali ambapo unataka kupitia kwa hivyo wewe unafanya bila kushauriwa na mtu yeyote na ndio unaona labda unaanzia jambo linaharibika Moses uongozi wake ulikuwa wa karibu sana na Joshua akiendelea kumwambia fanya hii fanya ile usifanye hii usifanye ile na yale mengine mtu hata haabiwi na menta ama mshauri unajionea wewe mwenyewe now, the symbolic act of laying hands on Joshua exemplifies the transfer of authority. Yani unmempa mtu mamlaka, uwezo, menta, unamuhitaji, diwaweza kukusaidia. Numbers has the journey from Mount Sinai to the plains of Moab. Hii ni safari ambaye, ambaye kitabu sha numbers inazugumzia juu yake. And in this journey, this should have taken just a matter of a few weeks. But it took a long, long time. An entire generation died in the desert. And that's why mentoring is important. Dio, ata wakati hutaweza kufanya kile unachofanya, wale watoto na wale younger generation that you are mentoring, they can be able to do what you do and continue even to build your legacy. The children inherited the lad of milk and honey. So if you are, if people are left without being mentored, we might not have people who can be able to do what we do or who can continue with what we do. So we ask ourselves, so what went wrong that the gener whole generation died in the wilderness and never reached there? It's because the nation rejected God's leadership. They refused to, uh, his chosen path of following the Lord in faith. They saw they started living in Maisha Uhaba subsistence kind of life and at the crossroads Joshua sent some men akatuma watu he told them go go and survey where we are going go and spy and they came back and brought the report 10 of the people brought a very scaring report only two people brought a good report one of the two is the Joshua that we are talking about Joshua who was mentored by Moses and when we mentor people we build people of good reports Tunajenga watu ambaye hawataogopa. Watu ambao wanaweza leta ripoti nzuri hata wakati ambapo hatutakuweko they will bring good reports. And majority are not always right. Here the majority are then and they bring the report kwamba huko ni kama majitu tutamezwa but two people. Two people. One of the two who, who was already enjoying a mentoring relationship with Moses comes and says, we are well able to take that lad. And even in this exodus, ambayo tumeanza, ya kutoka kwa hii hema, kuenda kwa hile mjego mwingine, we will require the two, not the ten. Hallelujah. We don't need the ten. Because the ten are going to pull us backward. We need the two who will tell us, inawezekana. Hallelujah. Na unaposema inawezekana, unaamini inawezekana. Even in your own life, when you, are, you, you, you need mentors, people who can look at you and tell you the possibilities. Because you already know the impossibilities. You do not need people who are going to bring fear again in you, like the way these guys brought fear. You need people who are going to take fear out of you. Those are the people we are calling mentors. So we must not allow fear to determine our next step. In this project, and also in life where you are, whatever God has been speaking to you about your own personal exodus, you must not allow fear to determine your next step. Usichukue hatua kulingana na uoga. Na nikifanya hii, itakuwa na mna hii. Kuna majitu kule, kuna majitu kule kuingine. Do not be afraid. Because where God leads, 
he will protect he will sustain and he will provide mungu akikuita mahali he is a god we look last sunday that he is a god who leads and protects sustains and provides i have told you my story before that when god called me to leave teaching in karema girls high school in nyandaro i was doing well as a teacher and i was doing well i was i was doing very very well i had spent a lot of years to be trained to become a teacher but when god called me to come and build GOA and serve full time well the, as a human being i asked myself where will my salary be coming from how will i even build those churches the first hall in donyonjero i was paying with my salary before i got other people to help me work uh, pay akina karedi and the rest of the people but one of the confidence the confidence my confidence came from the fact that when god leads and calls you he protects you and he sustains you and he provides for you if i feared and allowed fear to take over today we would not be celebrating 30 years of glory outreach assembly the reason why we have 30 years of celebration is because over 700 children have become fed and taken care of through this ministry because there was no fear over 160 churches all over uh, because of most uh, because of uh, the mentoring relationship between Moses and uh, Joshua you find that Joshua has become a leader that led the people to the promised land now the second relationship that we see in the bible is between Erija and Elisha this is that's another mentoring relationship Erija knows he is going away and verse 9 of second kings chapter 2 verse 9 says when they had closed Erija said to Elisha tell me what can i do for you before i am taken from you now today we are asking everyone to consider mentoring another person and so the question that a mentor asks a person is what can i do for you that is the question why because uh, when you mentor a person it is not about your agenda it's about the agenda of the other person unataka kumsaidia huyo mtu afike mahali ambapo either wewe umefika ama aende bali zaidi kwa hivyo wewe unapotafuta mshauri when you look for a mentor ni vizuri ujue ni nini unataka kufanya katika maisha unataka kufanya nini kwa sababu mshauri wako ama mentor wako atakuuliza what can i do for you what do you want me to do for you na hiyo ndio ile maswali ambao tunataka kila mtu aweze kuwa na mtu anamuuliza eh, nikusaidie aje ili uweze kufika mahali ambapo unataka kufika and so uh, i love her erija because he really had a good answer he said uh, just double portion just double portion of your anointing sasa zingine hatujuagi nini tunahitaji sometimes tuna sasa zingine tunauliza kitu wabaya haitatupeleka bali sana na wakati utaanza hizi relationship za ushauri hatugependa mtu ambaye anaona kama shida zake za kifedha ama za mambo mengine kama ziko kwa ule mtu mwingine ambaye yako pale no your mentor he works with you and helps you even get things that you would not have imagined for the future so there is that relationship uh, uh, of Jesus and his disciples Jesus is a good mentor ameshukua muda wake na wanafunzi wake he spent time with them he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach he spent time with them now today we are asking every one of us to be a good steward of their time to have enough time to generously share with another person whom you are working with that you can have time to meet with that person that you can have time to listen to that person because christianity is a life of relationships and when you invest in people like Jesus invested in the 12 siku ya leo wewe umefikiwa the gospel has reached you because of his investment in another person today we are talking of investing time with other people finding a mentor finding someone to work with you it has been very exciting this morning to to see bonfas minor in the church with the family karibu sana bonfas The, the the story that pastor peter did not say or the, or the wife is that bonfas is the firstborn 
of all the Tumaini children. He's the first, firstborn. He's the first one of all the over 700 children. And uh, on March 6th, we missed him. He didn't go home to his wife, uh, Eva, who, Eva, who is right here. Because we don't know the full story, but he didn't go home. We believe he was either kidnapped or whatever happened, but he didn't go home. And we never found him. We looked for him. We only found him uh, on 12th of March. All those days, when you don't know where your husband is, when you don't know where your son is, very stressful. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, without knowing. Only to find him in ICU in Kenyatta Hospital. This, this man here you see, not speaking, not knowing anybody, couldn't eat nothing. And many people weren't sure whether he was actually alive or not. Uh, I don't want to go that direction. But what I want to say is, there is a God who heals. That's why Bonfast is here today. And you, you know the joy that we have as parents to see him walking from ICU in Kenyatta to, to coming to church today for the first time. The other thing, as I talk about supportive relationship, I, I have been in this world for a while now. So I've been in this world for a very long time. But I want to tell you from the pulpit that I have never met a young wife who is dedicated, passionate, like this young lady here, the wife of Bonfas. Ive, we salute you. She's a young girl. But this lady has taken care of her husband from ICU, carried him, cooked for him, fed him. I have pictures where I have gone and seen her feeding him with the kijiko, like a baby. And you are my witnesses that 99% of wives, given that situation, would have left. Definitely. This is a very, very special lady. And I'm telling you, some people run away because of a small conflict or disagreement with the in-laws. Just a simple one. But this one had even a sharper one, a sharp disagreement with the, with the in-law, Bonfe's mother. And she's still stuck there. And I remember talking to that mother and saying, hey, you cannot do that. Go home to Karatina. Leave that lady to remain with her husband. Because sometimes we come in as a church and say no. But some women would not have waited for us to resolve that. They would have packed and gone. If there is a lady near you, tell them, if I've made it, you will make it. Tell them, if she made it, you will make it. And Ive, one of these days I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak to women in a big conference and tell you a story. How did you make it to stay with a man who was almost dead and a small baby who was left being weeks when he disappeared and, a, and, and, and your own sick mother with a stroke in the house and with another mother of his in the same house Nasikia wa mama anasema hey eh ni hey eh wale wale wa mama mimi ninajua wamefanya hivyo ni wale walika ya mama yangu na hiyo roho sijui ulitoa wapi alika ya mama yangu wale wanasemanga digie jaribu buko and then you find them there that is the only place may the lord bless you we are talking of supportive relationships even when somebody doesn't look like able to be supported or there's no hope or like you're not seeing light at the end of the tunnel but you are still supporting that person. Jesus had such a relationship with the disciples. Even when they slept, he asked them, oh, you can't even pray for an hour. And he did not leave them alone. He walked with them. Even when they went and they tried to cast the devils and they came back excited, the devils are obeying Jesus still had 
don't be excited about that be sure be happy that your names are there even when they behaved in a very funny way like somebody can away removing the sword they are cutting somebody's ear jesus just looked at them told them put back your sword put back your sword now let me tell you the mentoring habits of jesus to the disciples if we fully fully want to be like jesus we have a long way to go in bearing with people as we mentor them and that's why we today we are saying we want to work with everyone barnabas and paul this is another mentoring relation great one now barnabas is the one who is introducing paul to people because what were kuwa najua people knew that paul was a murderer he was a killer he was persecuting people and they so they would not believe when he got saved but the mentor came and took him to the people and said this man has been changed this man is new now that is only a mentor who can give you a report is only a mentor who can vouch for you is only a mentor who can say mimi namjua wakati ule na ninajua alikutana na Yesu na kwa kweli amebadilika that is why sometimes we have an introduction of a preacher the preacher we don't know so that we are trying to help people build credibility dio amsikilize na kuna watu wengine wamekosa watu wa kuwasikiliza kwa sababu hakuna mentors wa kusema kile kizuri iko ndani yao there are people who are very good even in out there doing in, in careers in business places of work but some people are still judging them with the way they were because they need a barnabas who will come and say no vile walikuwa walibadilika and today we are asking you to become a mentor of somebody where you can walk with that person mpaka mahali cv yake inahitajika wewe unaweza kuwa cv yourself you know the person so much that you can be the profile of that person that you can tell them hata kama karatasi yake haionyeshi vizuri anaweza fanya hii kazi kweli anaweza fanya vile ninamjua that is what we are calling mentoring paul and timothy another great relationship there supportive relationship Paul supporting Timothy and working with him and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others now this is the kind of relationship that we are asking you to identify someone and be the Paul to that Timothy so that that person can continue like Timothy continued to do what he had seen Paul doing inakuwa gani jambo la furaha sana wakati unaona mtu ambaye either ume, umesaidia ukawa mentor wake hata hakuwa anajua kuandika application ya kazi last night i was spending time teaching someone how to write an application na huyu ni mtu wa university na amesoma sijui masomo ya siku hizi iko namna gani mtu wa university tu, tu, we spent back and forth back and forth teaching the person how to write an application for a job and finally I wasn't very impressed even after spending those hours. What does that mean? It means that mentoring is not a one time thing. It's not a one time thing. Unaweza lala ukiogea na mtu na usimalize. Kwa hivyo kesho uendelee mahali ulifikisha na usife moyo. Na mimi siashi siashi mpaka wakati nitaona ameiadika hiyo application vizuri na ameattach makaratasi yake vizuri and this is an, a very very qualified guy. Ndio tunasema wakovu iko sawa umeokoka na uko sawa lakini kuna mambo mengi unaweza kosa katika hii dunia ya kufika mahali unataka kwa sababu kuna ingine ambaye haipatikani kwa, kwa damu ya Yesu peke yake i like what uh, what the leader of the service told us kuna mambo mengine damu ya Yesu haioshi kama ujiga ujiga unaoshwa na kusoma unaenda shule Hawezi hatuwezi kukuwekelea mikono ukose kuenda shule tuseme katika jina la Yesu ujiga huu utoke katika jina la Yesu sasa umevuka KCP aha katika jina la Yesu umevuka KCSE sasa katika jina la Yesu sasa uko na certificate degree sasa aenda tafuta kazi katika jina la Yesu sasa hiyo sisi wote tutakuwa wajiga because things don't work out that way but if we can mentor you and tell you that siku hizi mambo imekuwa rahisi unaweza soma hata online unaweza soma cohort za wiki fulani if we can encourage you and mentor you and connect you with those opportunities then we will be helping you a lot 
Now, mentoring, when you talk of mentoring, what are we talking about? Ushauri. Kuwa na mshauri ni kusema nini? Ni kusema huko na mtu where you have a relationship in which one experienced person is coming alongside a less experienced person to help that person achieve their priorities. Hivyo divo tunasema. Wewe uko very experienced kibiashara. Kuna mwingine hapa anataka kuanza. Wewe unacombine hiyo experience yako na hii kukosa experience kwa huyu unamsaidia. Kuna mtu anataka kuwa mama mzuri zaidi. Anatafuta mama mwingine ambaye ni mama mzuri zaidi. Alafu huyo mama mzuri zaidi anatebea na yeye mpaka na huyu mama naye anafika mahali anataka kuwa. Now that is what we are talking about. Unataka kusoma, unatafuta mtu amesoma. Unamkaribia. Unamuuliza how did you manage? Mentoring helps a mentee, the person being mentored to reach his or her god-given potential. Hapa kanisa hii na kwingine kuna watu wako na uwezo mwingi, potential nyingi lakini hawajafika hata nusu. Kwa sababu hawana watu wa kutembea na wao wasaidie kufika, kufika hiyo sehemu nyingine. Sasa wewe tunakuambia siku ya leo usitoke hapa bila kuanza kuuliza mtu fulani awe your mentor. One person empowers another one by sharing God-given resources. That's what we call mentoring. An experienced person anatembea na ule ambaye ana experience. One one of the best mentors in this church is Pastor Peter here. Pastor Peter aliagalia akaona kijana mmoja hapa alikuwa anaitwa Sam Njoroge hata hakuwa amewa. Aka akaona uchugaji kwake. Akamleta karibu. Wakaanza kutembea na wewe ugewaona pamoja kila saa. Paka wanaanza kununua guo zinafanana. Paka tembea pamoja. Finally hata sisi tukaanza kuona hii kumbe huyu kijana anaweza kuwa na kitu. That's, a, that's what mentoring relationship does. Akaka aka akatuletea huyu amekaa karibu na yeye hapa. Eh? <laughs> Amplay. Sisi tulikuwa tunaona mtu tu mpole anakuja na watoto na mke wake wanaenda nyumbani. Hatukuwa tunajua anaweza kuwa na faida kwetu kwa mambo ya biashara pita akaona akamleta karibu. Sasa si yeye ndiye ametuogoza ibada. Akaka aka, akaona Dennis ule ambaye amekaa karibu na mke wake pale. Akamleta karibu, wakaanza kutembea na yeye sasa Dennis ndiye amekuwa director wetu wa missions. Very soon we are going to dedicate him and his team to be representing us out there. Na ndio ametua anatuwakilisha beat the drum tunapata report nzuri anatuwakilisha Mulera anatuwakilisha Vitaithia but it is started with him seeing that na kuwaleta karibu that's what we are calling an experienced person in a certain area bringing another person the other excellent mentor in this church ni Freddy ule mnaona pale huyu kijana mnaona hapa huyu <laughs> walianza kutembea na Freddy na mmeona tu anamwambia beba hii speaker inashikagwa hivi huyu anabeba saa zingine ana karibu imwagushe akiwa mdogo hapa primary anamwambia weka chini vizuri eh anaendelea hivyo na yeye anamwambia unajaribu kucheza hii drum wanakaa na yeye pale kwa kwa computer sasa i don't know what this young man can do but i know he can do so much because of that kule they are together now that working an experienced person working with a less experience that is what we call mentoring That is what we are calling mentoring. There might be others that I, I maybe I have not seen or they have not serviced. But we are talking of a person who walks with another one and transfers that. Now, mtu akija kwako akwambia anataka uwe mentor wake. Ni vizuri umuuliza hii maswali mawili. What are your priorities? How what is your vision? What, where do you want to reach? Because it's about him, not about you. And then how can I help you achieve that? Those are the two questions that we need to ask people whom we are mentoring. At least ajue anataka nini, wewe huko hapa umsaidie aweze kufika pale ili awe kile ambacho anataka kuwa. Now there are three levels of mentorship. Unaanza kuwa na ile tunaita intensive, yani mnakaa na mtu kama vile nimepeana example hapa ya Hawa ambao kila saa utawakuta pamoja. Intensive. Yani wanaulizana maswali hata yale basic mambo mengi wanafanya pamoja. Kuna ile occasional. Hamuna hiyo muda mwingi. Once in a while you can meet with a person even several months or even on a call on a phone. That is occasional. Na kuna passive. 
where you maybe you have never met your mentor maybe you have been reading about his books or maybe you have seen his videos and he has become your mentor so today as we launch mentoring tunakuuliza ujaribu kuwa na all these levels uwe na mtu ambaye ni wa karibu sana na wewe intensive mnaweza kutana mnaweza ogea you can have tea you can visit each other pia uwe na mtu ambaye hata kama hapatikani anaweza kukusaidia kwa bali kwa muda kwa ile area ambayo unataka kusaidiwa na pia ni kuwa na hiyo passive unapenda mtu fulani kwa sababu ya area fulani if you ask many bishops and pastors who their mentors are in leadership many of them will tell you John Maxwell but they have never met him but they read all his books they watch his tips so you can have all those levels of of mentoring and you can choose one mentor for in one area na utafuta mshauri mwingine sehemu nyingine because hakuna mtu anajua mambo yote all mature christians can become mentors of another person kuna kitu unajua kama unataka kuwa kuwa na mshauri wa kukusaidia kikazi tafuta mtu ambaye unajua amefanya vizuri kazini then huyo mtu labda hajafanya vizuri sana katika huduma hajatumia karama yake vizuri so look for another person whom you admire the way they serve the lord and that becomes your mentor in that area maybe you admire somebody the way they do in, in their family unapenda hiyo family go to them and approach them to mentor you in family matters it depends on which area you need but we must invest in the next generation so that we can be able to build a good generation now when you are looking for a mentor what are you going to be looking for because after this we will go into groups and we will ask you to look for a mentor what will you be looking for utakuwa ukitafuta nini number one, tafuta mtu who is who has the ability to see potential somebody who can look at you na aone wewe unafaisa faulu sana kufanya hiyo jambo don't look for people who don't see potential Potential sometimes inakuwa imefichwa uwezo wa kufanya jambo sasa zingine unakuwa umefichwa tafuta mtu ambaye atakuonyesha hiyo uwezo iko ndani yako look for a, tol- a tolerant person who is tolerant with mistakes so that that person will help you a, a person ambaye hawezi fumilia ukifanya kosa moja atakufukuza kwa haraka sana kama ha- kama huyu kijana sasa najua wakiwa na Freddy lazima kuna mahali ambao hajafanya vizuri sana lakini Freddy hajafukuza yeye tolerance hata saa zingine naonaga vitu za Freddy nyingi zime, zimevujika simu nini nafikiria ni wewe <laughs> umejitetea when you are mentoring someone sometimes you pay the price kama unafundisha mtu kupika <laughs> unaweza kuta umechomwa ukiwa hapa unamfundisha umechomwa na mafuta you pay the price sometimes Unaweza kuwa unasaidia mtu kuendesha gari ajali imetokea. So but tolerance is important. Sisi wote tulisoma kwa njia hiyo. If you are looking for a mentor, look for a flexible person. Mtu ambaye is flexible to respond to people and circumstances. Sio mtu akisema njia ni hii, lazima iwe ni hiyo. Hata kama kuna ingine shortcut hataki, yani akisema njia hii jambo inafanywa this is done this way. No, a person who is flexible, flexible. He can listen to you and also try your way of doing it. So when you are looking for a mentor, look for a person with patience. Time is needed to develop a person. Usiende kwa mtu ambaye anataka uwe kile ambacho unataka kuwa saa hiyo hiyo. Somebody who is patient, ambaye atatembea na wewe mwaka huu, hujafauru. Mwaka mwingine hujafauru, but he is still with you because he, until you develop B look for a person who has perspective a person who is able to see the future and to make helpful suggestion mtu ambaye anaweza kukuambia eh ukipika hivi ile unapika hivi uh, ninaona family yako itakuwa mzuri sana e, itakuwa vizuri sana anaona bahari hata kama nikasiana kadogo na mentor na anaona vile kameanza kufanya anaona kakiwa kwa family fulani ako na perspective ya tofauti za mambo Look for somebody who sees gifts and abilities and he is able to build and encourage other people. Those are the people we are looking for here in the church to become mentors. Mtu ambaye anaweza ona karama ya mtu. Kama vile huyu aliona karama ya uchugaji na akaleta analeta hawa watu, ameiona. Ameiona abilities and gifts. 
And those things sometimes are seen even when people are so young or very, very, very young by mentors who are uh, able to see that. So, utaanza wapi? Where do you start to launch a mentoring relationship? Unaanza wapi? Number one, you start by praying. Telling God, give me a mentor in this area which you need, this area. Unaomba, you pray. Second, you approach the person, ule mungu atakupea kwa maombi, wakati unaomba. So when we break into groups today, we are not expecting you that you are going to live there with a mentor, but we are expecting that you will begin the process. Because sometimes you might need to pray. But if you already know, unajua huyo mtu anaweza, muulize direct yata leo. Now, plan to meet with that person. Usiwe tu unasemanga, hey, furani, vire na muona, ni mentor wagu. And you don't even meet. Hakuna kitu kama isho. You must plan to start meeting. Kama unataka kupika chapo ambazo mtu wakikula analia machozi kama mugure, uanza kukutana na mugure, anakuonyesha kupika hizo chapati mpaka mtu wakikula analia machozi. You, you cannot be saying, eh, vile alipika siku hile tulikuwa na function. <laughs> eh, eh, ilikuwa na, no, you ask, you ask, you approach the person, you tell the person, can we start meeting siku frani? And then you seek confirmation kwa huyo mtu umekubali kuwa mentor wako usiasimu kwa sababu umemuuliza ati amekuwa no labda unaweza kumuuliza akuambie wacha ni Eden yobe ama akuambie wacha ni Eden yagalie my responsibilities nione kama nitaweza kuogezea another responsibility so don't assume you seek confirmation nilikuuliza uwe mentor wangu siku ile ukasema unaomba umekubali ama umefika wapi and that is what we want. Uh, so those are the steps that you're going to use. Pray, approach a person, plan to, to meet, and seek confirmation. That's how you, re, you get into a mentoring relationship. Unaangalia mtu unajua. Ukitaka kuwa DJ, unaenda kwa ule DJ pale. Unamuliza, u DJ, unafanyagwa na mnagani. Anakuabia tukutane, unakutana. Anaanza kutebea na wewe katika hiyo safari. Apostle Paul was a mentor to Timothy. Titus and many others. And when we read, uh, there are some lessons that Apostle Paul is talking to us about mentoring. Kwa hii kanisa, we have older men. And Paul tells Timothy, Titus, in 2 verse 1, that those older men should teach the younger men to be temperate, to be worthy of respect, to be self-controlled, to, to be sound in faith, in love, and in the endurance. These lessons... We might not teach them here in the pulpit. We might not have enough time. But they could be best taught by older men to the younger men. Now, dear, in the next few minutes, we are going to put all the men together so that they can begin to discuss and ask each other, how can the older men in this group, in this church, be of help to the younger men? Apart from the lessons that Timothy, uh, Titus is being told by Paul that we teach them temp being temperate, worthy of respect, self-control, faith, in love, and endurance, there might be other things that they themselves would want to learn from the older men. So, young men who are here, when we meet with the older men and young men, it is up to you to tell us what is it you would like to learn. But we might also be able to see something that you need. So, we can also tell you that we, we see, the time we have seen you, we have seen this and that. And we want to bring together men and boys, because we also want to turn our boys to men. Uh, most of the boys that we have seen in this church over the years, those who are closer to certain men in this church, they have a kind of confidence that is very, very different from others. And uh, we can mention them, some of those you are seeing in the, in the walk. Those who, who are closer, close, they were close that they can still talk to a man and ask him a question or say something or walk with them. They have a unique kind of confidence. And that is what we want to provide. Even to those who may not know the value of walking with others. So, of course, we might not be able to do everything uh, together with the boys. We will ask each ourselves which categories 
of mentorship do we want to have with which ages? Um, now, older women, you can be mentors of younger women. And Titus is told by Paul, some lessons that uh, older women can learn from younger women is to be reverent, living, not straddlers, not addicts in wine. Teach them what is good. The older women can teach the younger one to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, purity, to be busy at home, to be kind, to submit to their husband. I didn't know why the list was longer for women, <clears throat> but, uh, but those are things that Paul uh, is telling Titus, that older women need to teach the younger ones. Now, I, I, I happened to visit uh, Crystal to see this beautiful Eliana baby some time back. And, uh, and we had a very nice conversation. It was very good. And I asked her, that's when I took this picture uh, during my visit. And I asked her, uh, you, have never, you have never given birth before. How did you know how to wash this baby and uh, to do the other things that you have done so that the baby looks like this? And I loved her answer. She said, I have been mentored by Pastor Loos how to wash the baby. That Pastor Loos started coming when I came from hospital. She teaches me how to hold, how to do, what to do, how to wash. And she said, if there is anything I had no clue, I had no clue at all, it is how to, to, to wash the baby. But Pastor Loos has worked with me even now, when, she's, when, when, when I already know I've seen from her, she still comes to walk with me. Now, as a pastor, you feel very good when you hear such a testimony about your members. When you hear that one member has worked with another in a life skill, and now the, the person whom they, who have been mentored is, has been supported so much that now she can do it on her own, you feel very good as a pastor. And that is, those are the kind of testimonies that we want to hear about one another here. That so and so has taught me this skill. I had no idea. Now I know. Now I can do it. So and so has worked with me in this. And I want to challenge every one of us to invest in somebody in a skill that one day they can give such a testimony and say that I knew everything else but this one. I give credit to so-and-so who walked with me. The gentleman behind this camera is from Rwanda. He's called Theophilus. This guy has mentored one of the youth here, Vincent Mumo, to become a great guy. Mumo was hopeless. Mumo has given, had given up in life. In fact, one day we were going around for door to door, and I don't know we were with who, but when we reached near their house, Mumo took off and he, I think he went under the bed. Because he had become so hopeless, he could not even want to meet with, uh, with the servants of God. He alitwonea kwambali. But this guy took him, went with him to his studio, and began to understand his passion for, for, for video, for music, and he began to give him, to show him how to do things. Even before he knew that this boy would be admitted, as we speak today, Mumo is in Longo University, doing journalism and media, which has a lot to do with the mentoring by the Ophelas. And every day that I visited the studio, High Step Media, and I saw Mumo is sitting here, the Ophelas is sitting here, he is showing him, here you do this, you edit like this, you do this. I loved it and I enjoyed it. Now when Mumo was, uh, became to a point of going to the university a few weeks ago, the Ophelas was the first one. To, to give him a gas cooker when he was racing to go and, 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 and use there. When you are a mentor of somebody, you share even the resources that you have with that person. Now, what do you think the Ophelas will feel on the graduation day of Vincent? What do you think he will feel? Knowing the full story and on that day when we are all rejoicing, seeing, dancing with a the gown there, but we don't know the full story. He will be excited. That's what it means to mentor someone. Young men, let them be mentored to be self-controlled. Young men can easily lose control. 
they need to be mentored in issues of integrity seriousness because they can be jokers soundness of speech this is what Paul is telling Timothy that these are areas you should not leave in mentoring and that's why we need we need older men here who will tell a young men well life has seasons it's not all the season that you are going to take out your tongue there are times you put your tongue inside the mouth those are lessons can only be taught in a mentoring in a mentoring session there, that there are times when things become serious now that is why we are saying we need you to know that you may never study here to preach but you might change somebody's life out there so when we meet meet already paul has given us through titus lessons that we can address but the people we mentor will come with other lessons they will say i want to be i want to become a banker i want to become a preacher i want to become this i want to become that and then we might not be bankers ourselves but we know amica who are bankers so we can connect them with other mentors so you can become a mentor or connect a person with other mentors so that they can become whatever they want to become modern workers Titus is taught by Paul teach them how to be subject to their masters not to backbite their their employers not to steal from their employers to be fully trusted these are lessons that can never be taught just in a church setting but they would better be taught by a person who has done well in the work where they are employed they have been there for years they have even been licensing in the ladder they can easily mentor another person to be subject to the masters and to not to backbite them not to steal from them to be trustworthy these are lessons that we can teach now we are going into groups now and when we go we are going to be finding mentors we will go and find mentors the groups have got leaders there the men leaders will lead the discussions there the women leaders will lead the discussion between the girls and the, and the ladies or the women and you and, and let me tell you you cannot finish this but you need to lay a good foundation for mentoring a good foundation to continue so make sure as a leader that you leave the discussion at a point where you have shattered the path you have laid a good foundation that people can individually move on their own but when we go into these groups we want to uh, we want to discuss mentoring we want to discuss to allow people if they have already seen mentors already we want to hear uh, briefly about people who have enjoyed mentoring and help people know where they can get the mentors so that is what we'll be doing when in a few minutes now let's talk about the various aspects of mentoring there's group now together pale for example the men and the boys we can we will think about the group mentoring where we can where men and boys can spend a day in uhuru park or laboratory or where just 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 to not even talking just being with them there just for them to see that men can also be available and they can be there or the ladies the girls and the women out there group mentoring or they can have a session here in church or somewhere where one experienced person is talking there is that group and we will need to discuss that and ask each other how often can we do that in your big group of men and boys in the big group of girls and women you ask yourself how often can we have these uh, group mentoring sessions where we can even get an expert in this area and talk about that so that whoever is interested in that area they can follow it and but most importantly the second one is the individual where the individual has a one on one you find a person and you, you approach the person and ask the person to be your mentor and you start meeting and you agree a person who can be asking you the hard question did you pray today did you did you have you added any papers this year into your into your books or into your into your profiles what are you thinking about this hard hard questions people who will help you know how to apply for those jobs or how to become a better person in church or out there so there is that individual one on one you will find that and there is the group now today we are very blessed because we have uh, the bank people 
So, and we have a lady there. So she's going to join the, the girls and the women. And she's going to be given an opportunity there to say uh, whether there are any mentoring opportunities between bank and those girls. And we have men from the bank also who will go to the main group. And they'll also have an opportunity to say, is there any opportunity there for mentoring, whether group or individual? Uh, we are also blessed to have our couple from Switzerland. Uh, they will be given an opportunity there also briefly. The, the, the lady will go to the ladies, the man will go to the men, and they will tell us uh, how does this mentoring work in your country? Uh, what, what are the benefits? I mean, they will share their briefly what they have. And who knows? Maybe somebody can find an international mentor today or find a banker today. Nobody knows. So when we go there, but the people who have the greatest challenge are those who will lead those meetings because uh, those meetings can be very exciting, particularly when people start connecting their future with an experience of somebody else. When people start hearing, I mean, people that they can be very exciting. So it's up to you to decide how long you want to stay and how you want to control the discussions there so that you can make the best use of it. Uh, we will not tell you how long you can stay. It's up to you. But finally, when you feel that it is time, the leader will just pray and bless you and you go home, will not come back here anymore. But it's up to you and the leaders to decide how you want to work together and what you can do together. Today we are launching. But where you go with the mentoring relationships is beyond, is beyond up to eternity. You can also discuss what you can do together. Uh, to, for the dream center to move from this tent as a group of men and boys, as a group of girls and women, you can discuss what is it that you can do together there are so many things along the lines of mentoring that you can discuss today, uh, opportunities are very many even for ministry I was thinking today how, how our brother Paul uh, donated his car and his skill and his fuel and he went and, and brought Bonfas Minor in the family to church. And because of Paul doing that ministry, going to Mobi and bringing them to church, and I believe he'll take them back, all of us had great celebrations. And we were all blessed because of Paul's generosity today. You know, sometimes we look at giving in a very limited way of money. But I was asking myself when I was seated there, that uh, who gave more today? And who gave more? You know, Jesus asked that. Out of all these people, who gave more? And they said the woman who had coins. So I was asking, who gave more? And I was seeing that Paul gave more than me. Today, regarding, regardless of what offering I gave, regardless, regardless of preaching, I'm preaching to you. He left his house, donated his car, his time, and went and brought this family to church. And he'll take them back. Opportunities are just too many. Too many. We just need to, to love to invest in people. To be generous with uh, to be good stewards the way we learned the other day and god is glorified and when i was seeing the joy that all of us had to see bonfest i was saying what other opportunity could be there that could be different that somebody else has not made use of church let's not be mean let's not be selfish let's be generous even with our time because mentoring takes a lot of time Somebody will call you at the middle of the night as a mentor and say, oh, I feel I can't sleep in this home. That it, 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 mentoring, investing in people sometimes interrupts your privacy. Somebody will tell you, can we meet this weekend when you are very busy and they are feeling they can't wait. So we are talking about investing ourselves in people's life. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much. Because you gave us your son Jesus and he died on the cross for us that we may not perish but have eternal life today as we break into groups of men and boys girls and women give us the attitude that Jesus had of dying and giving himself for others in terms of our time in terms of the knowledge that we have in terms of the experiences that we have Lord, help us to be generous, to invest in other people. And I pray for everyone who is here today, 
that you'll open their eyes to look at these characteristics that we have talked about and to find mentors who will walk with them in this journey of life. I speak these blessings to the groups as they meet in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.